I'm Sarah Squires, the Nurturing Coach. Um, welcome to this live. If you're watching this either later on Facebook or on my YouTube channel, please do comment. If you're commenting on the live, hopefully they will come up on this screen and I will do my best to answer them. If you comment and I miss it or you comment after it's gone out, Again, I will, I will get back to you. Equally, if you're watching it on YouTube, please do comment below the video and I will reply to you as well. Don't forget to like and if you're on YouTube, please do click the subscribe button as well. It really does help. So, tonight we are going to talk about how do you deal with the lies. Lies are just part and parcel of a relationship with a narcissist. It's as easy to them as breathing. But it can really rip at you as a person because you'd never know what's real and what's not. You end up not trusting yourself or anyone else. And that can make the world a really lonely place. So how do you deal with that? Well, first off, let's look at why. Why do they lie? And the important thing to remember here is at the core of it, narcissists are little kids. They've not grown past that um, kind of infantile state. And so when we look at why they lie, they're very similar to the reasons that children lie. And so a lot of these reasons are going to apply. If you've got children that you're struggling with lies, this video will also apply to them as well. So when we talk about the narcissist, we may be talking about the kids. The, the, the reasons are going to be the same and the way you deal with it is going to be the same as well. So first one is that small children simply do not understand the difference between what's real or not. They've, got, they've not developed the cognitive abilities to have concrete um, things in their life. They, you take something away, they think it's gone forever. They, don't, they just don't understand um truth and lies they don't understand it so what they do what they when they say it there is an element of them just not understanding what is true anymore and we know that this is true with narcissists they completely believe their own lies their brains have distorted the truth to become what they believe it is and they do believe it they don't know the difference between what is real and what is not and that can be so hard for you as a rational fully brain developed person who can clearly see what's real and what's not what's truth and what's lie when they stand in front of you with all the evidence hi Jermaine when they stand in front of you and you present all this evidence and they and they absolutely believe that they are telling the truth because they don't they can't tell the difference between the truth and not truth. I'm really sorry if you can hear banging in the background the kitten playing with the lights. So I do apologize if you can hear that. And if you can't, I apologize that I just stopped the video to tell you that. So <laughs> the second reason is that we or whenever we lie and we're all capable of lying and we all tell the old porcupine from time to time. We do it because we want to cover up that we've done something. With the narcissist, there's so many layers of wanting to cover up something. Partly because they don't want to be seen as being anything other than perfect. They have this... One of the uh, DSM criteria is that they have these fantasies. They have that fantasy of, of both themselves and the world around them. And lies simply don't fit into that. And so they lie to maintain that image they lie to maintain that fantasy world that they have created which again goes back to that that childhood um of being in fantasy young children stay in that fantasy stage for quite a long time it's it's how they explore the world for the narcissist they want to retain that fantasy world because it's a safer place where they are all these wonderful things and they don't do bad things and so they lie to protect that fantasy and protect that false sense of self there's also um children lie because they don't want the negative response from the adult they don't want you to judge them 
equally. Narcissists don't want you to tell them off or to judge them either, but for a slightly different reason, in my opinion. Children do it because they don't want the guilt and the shame that goes when they get found out. So they've done something wrong, so they lie to cover it up because they really don't want the guilt and the shame that goes with, with having been found out. Narcissists, whilst there is an argument that they feel very deep shame and that is at the heart of a lot of their issues, I struggle with the guilt and the shame argument. Not saying it doesn't exist, it's just something I personally struggle with. But I do think that they definitely lie to maintain that false sense of them being absolutely perfect and absolutely wonderful they also avoid like to avoid the inconvenient truth of there's rules in life in relationships in humanity we have we all have to adhere by morality and the rules and so they like to avoid that it's an inconvenient to them so they simply do what they want but like to cover it up and we've all experienced that. We've all experienced the one rule for them, another for everyone else kind of thinking. And it is really frustrating, uh, but it's just simply how they think. They absolutely believe that the rules do not apply to them. And so they will lie if they are aware that they broke your rules, but they don't believe that the rules apply to them. And finally, that people with low self-esteem and... Although narcissists present as being very self-important and thinking very highly of themselves, again, at the core of it, they are small children who desperately want approval. And so people with low self-esteem do tend to lie and embellish the truth because they want to impress. And sometimes that impress is to gain the upper hand. Sometimes it's a status thing. And sometimes it's simply to get attention. But there's four reasons there that, that why people, and in particular why children and narcissists, lie. And when I say children and narcissists, I'm not saying children are narcissists. What I'm saying is the reasons that narcissists lie are often because they haven't developed into an adult state. They have remained in that child state. So the reasons are very similar to the reasons that children lie, because narcissists are essentially still children. So now you know how, why they do it, what do you do about it? Because it doesn't change the fact that it really hurts and it's frustrating when someone lies to your face or lies to other people about you. So we're going to run through sort of six things that you can do. And some of these are going to be based on you still having contact with them. Um, and some are going to be more for you. So the first one is calmly name the issue but don't demand a confession narcissists would never admit when they've lied so don't try and get them to you can present them with all the emails all the texts or video that they've lied about something and they will still uh, they will still deny it so rather than attempt to get that confession simply state what the issue is and Leave it at that. You voice what the issue is. You don't need anything from them. You are simply stating, I'm not happy that this has happened. Um, and like I say, you do not need them to confirm or deny. You are simply stating the issue. Second one is, now, when you understand the reason, which we've gone through some of these reasons, it's easier to, it's not easier to take the lie but it gives you an insight and it means you are less likely to need an explanation from them. Because when people lie, we kind of, we want to know why, what the hell, what, why couldn't you tell me the truth? You, you go around in circles and the narcissist will never give you an answer that gives you any peace whatsoever. So having the answers, having those reasons that we've just been through, you don't need to then chase the answer from them. You know the reasons that they've lied. You don't need it from them. You know it. And so it gives you that peace of mind. It doesn't change what they've done, but it stops you from chasing your tail in trying to get to the bottom of why they did what they did. They did it for all those reasons. They did it because essentially they're a child and they they 
just don't understand the truth and all those are the reasons that we talked about this gives you the peace of mind to to know that you're never going to get the response from them that you might be seeking so un just for your own benefit you understand why they did it you don't need to go looking to them for it. it again it limits that contact that you need to have with them it also takes the power and the control away from them because in part they kind of want you to not, to be questioning them and saying why and going on and on at them about it because it gives them all the attention that they're seeking so when you just can't be bothered with that because you already know that infuriates them to some degree because they want you to be pestering them so when you're able to not do that it gives you a lot of power back in that situation next one is teach them lying doesn't work and by this we mean don't give in don't give in to their attempts to get your attention often lies are an attempt to get some kind of reaction out of you don't give them it it will they will learn that they don't get the response from you so go no contact go gray rock because they are looking for your response and when you don't give it you're showing them your lies don't work anymore your lies don't give you the response that they used to i'm not feeding you anymore so lie all you like i'm not giving you what you want respond with clear consequences so again clear consequences are nothing from me you are getting nothing from me if there's consequences that need to be put in place around either the relationship if you're still in one or the contact that you're having or or whatever else put those in place as a result of that grey rock and no contact are the main consequences that i recommend because that's kind of kicking in where it hurts the most taking away your attention um praise give them praise when they do tell the truth i know that sounds really weird but actually part of the frontal lobe is damaged in narcissists and there's been lots of research that has shown that praise can help with that area of the brain and also we know that people respond much better to positive reinforcement than they do negative so when someone when they do whether it be the narcissist or equally a child if you're if you're thinking thinking about a child that you're one of your kids that might be lying when they tell you the truth lots of praise i really appreciate you telling me the truth it's really great of you um i i, I admire you that must have been hard but i i really appreciate it and it will give them more confidence to tell the truth next time it may not necessarily work in that directly that way but it will be a very clear message that actually they get a much the narcissist gets a much better response from you gets the attention that they want when they do do something good and so it, it can work praise does work and like i say it, it's there's lots of evidence that it does help with the prefrontal cortex as well and the final one and this is probably the most powerful for you is Think about why the lie is bothering you so much. Because people will say and do anything they want. We can't control anyone else. And I'm not saying lies don't hurt. I've been lied to and it does hurt and it, it sends you a bit whappy because you want to know the truth. But deep down you already do know the truth. So why is that not enough? And this is not this is more of a kind of a hypothetical than anything. When you know the truth that you've been lied to or that they are lying to you, why does it matter that you get anything from them? Why does it matter that they've lied? You you kind of need to look at yourself in as much as what is I don't care about this person anymore. They mean nothing to me. So why does it matter if they're lying to me? I'm not saying it shouldn't matter that they lie to you. I just think it's worth exploring why it's so important or why it's hurting you so much. Because ultimately, you want to find peace. You want to feel better about this. And like I say, you can't stop them lying. But what you can do is you can think about why you're responding the way you are to it. So very quickly, we have already had a question on um, our Facebook page, so I am going to um, quickly address that. Um, I may go into further detail on a post, and that's another thing. 
if you comment and I don't get a chance to reply to you in the live or you think of something afterwards, then do pop a comment and I will do a post on our Facebook page um, with a response. So you will get a response and if I think it's going to help everyone, I'll do a post about it. So the question that we had on the Facebook page was around how do you deal with the lies that they tell other people, particularly within the family court setting um, and when they make out that, that you're making false allegations around them. And this is a really difficult one. So I'm going to give you the practical response that uh, that I would recommend. Um, and in cases uh, that I've worked with, with parents that go through family court, the practical response is go for a fact finding. If, um, if, you, if you've made an allegation and they're denying it, it should automatically go to fact finding. But that would be your next step. You can also, at this point, I would start bringing in some experts. I would start recommending that you have whatever the whatever the allegations are. If if, um, if they're claiming that you're trying to alienate them, for example, through false allegations, get a parental alienation expert in. A parental alienation expert. People get confused and they think oh well all parental alienation experts are going to say it is they're not at all they're very well trained they know what parental alienation is and so if it's ha if it's not happening they will report it's not happening and that if it's and if it isn't happening that will go in your favor and that will show that they are lying and you will be able to um obviously prove that they don't have an argument that you're alienating and therefore they are making this up and, and that will give your argument a lot of strength. From a non-practical point of view, from an emotional point of view, it's really hard when you're going through family court and they're lying to professionals and they're lying to the court because we have this view that family court is all about justice and all about the truth and it's quite different to that. Um, and I have a course coming out on that which details how, how do you get ready, how do you get court ready because all of this comes into play. But essentially a lot of it is about you and how you prepare for this. Um, how you respond to this will impact the success of, of your court case because they, again, as we've been through, they're lying for a reason. They're lying to get a response from you and so you need to be thinking of what response are you giving and how is that fitting in to the argument and the narrative that's being played out. I will, um, like I say, we are, I am releasing a course very shortly around this kind of subject anyway, so do keep an eye out for that. Um, but it is a big area, so it's not something without taking up, it'd be something that it would take weeks and weeks and lots of lots of advice to get through. But those are my two key points. One, get an expert, go for your fact finding, um, parental alienation expert if that's the allegations that are being made, if not family family um, psychologist so that you can assess everyone within the family. Um, I say fact finding should get to the bottom of allegations anyway, although it's not always easy. Um, and again look to yourself look at how you present and think about why the lies are bothering you so much in terms of you know the truth hold on to the truth that's the most important thing hold on to your truth you don't need to tell everyone else you don't need to be shouting to everyone else what the truth is when you stand firm within it because the truth does always come out a hundred and ten percent the truth can never stay hidden so Stay, stand firm in what you believe to be the truth and hold your faith in that and believe that the lies will get caught out. But like I say, I have offered some practical tips as well. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, I haven't seen comments come up, but that doesn't mean that you haven't made any. So if you have, a, if you have made a comment, they've not been rolling on my screen. Um, so over the next couple of days, I will be looking at... Um, the comments and I will be posting a, re a reply to you so if you have and, and uh, you haven't responded I am I do apologize but we, I will do that if you're watching on YouTube do post a comment and I will respond to that as well so take care everyone and I hope you have a great evening I hope you found this useful and I will speak to you very soon take care bye, -bye.